Hello, this is Tim from Cedar River Music. Uh, just wanted to take a chance to show you a little bit of the classroom xylophone and how I teach this to kids, some technique things. Uh, starting off with the mallets. As you can see, I've got two mallets here and an alto xylophone. When I teach kids to hold mallets, we always start with the thumb and first finger. I call these the crab claws. So I tell the kids, show me your crab claws and then pinch the middle of the mallet, so halfway between the top and the bottom. A lot of mallets have down here, it looks like a handle. It's really a weight and it's not really designed to be held way down there. It's designed to be held in the middle for better balance and more accuracy when playing the, the instrument. So if they pinch both hands right there, uh, one thing, fun thing, if you cross it over like that and go like this, it kind of looks like a crab crawling around. So if your kids know what a crab looks like, that's kind of fun. So there's the crab claws holding the middle. The other fingers stay loose around the edges so that you get a nice bounce uh, and you're holding it with knuckles on top like you're riding a bicycle. So that's the other thing you can tell the kids is to play uh, like they're riding a bicycle. Uh, one of the first things I teach kids is how to roll on a certain pitch and in order to do that I teach them to place one mallet a little bit higher, one mallet a little bit lower on the same bar. I don't know if that's how well you can see that, uh, like this. So they're not bumping into each other, but they're out of, out of each other's way. So then they can roll, alternating hands right away, and we do Goldilocks and the Three Bears, Papa Bear, and Mama Bear, and Baby Bear, and walking through the forest, and sipping their porridge, and all of that. So uh, you can teach it uh, just using echoes. When they get into more advanced songs, you really do want them to work on that alternating hands. I usually don't worry about which hand they start with, whether it's right or left, as long as they are using both hands alternating. For example, here's a chicken on a fence post. And for a song like that, it's also helpful, of course, to take off bars. So before I ever let kids take off the bars, we talk about lifting them straight and lifting with two hands, uh, like so. Putting one hand on the top, one hand on the bottom, lifting straight up. Really need to be careful teaching your kids this because these pegs on the instruments can bend, they can break, they could also break the bar uh, if they're lifting with one hand and putting pressure on that peg. So lifting off, if you lift off the E's and B's or eggs and bacon. Then you have an F do pentatonic setup, which again would work for that chicken on a fence post. And it's really easy for them to see where the do re mi set is there. Uh, one other thing I like to do is I like to play backwards on my instrument so that when I'm moving up the scale, the kids are moving the same direction, so they can really be my mirror. It doesn't seem to bother me to play backwards. I've been doing it long enough. Uh, you'll have to check it out for yourself. You will get one or two really smart kids in the class who will try to figure out what you're doing and then play theirs backwards too. Uh, so watch out for that. Finally, uh, in order to have a good classroom experience with the instruments, um, the kids need to be set up at a good height. This table right here with this chair is pretty good. It might be a little bit low for me, but uh, I can just have my arms out and relax like I would be sitting at a piano. Uh, you don't want it up here where they can't really see and they have to stretch to get it, and you don't want it too low where they have to bend forward. So play around with boxes, tables. Uh, if you have beautiful stands for your instruments, definitely use those or if you can get them. Uh, and try to get everyone about at waist height where they can really relaxed play. Uh, and finally, you need a signal. When kids are playing xylophones, they're having a lot of fun and you need to be able to say something like mallets up and they put them on the shoulders so that you can give the rest of your directions. Well, that's it for some basic xylophone uh, technique and teaching tips. Uh, if you want more information, check out my book, Xylophone and Other Bard Percussion, A Creative Sequence. Uh, this is one of our creative sequence series. We also have a recorder book by my father. Uh, we have a book, the, the original creative sequence book was about organizing your curriculum. And we also have one uh, connecting the, your creative sequence to the new core music standards. Um, and so 
feel free to check out all of those. They're available in music stores um, or on our website, cs.cedarrivermusic.com. Um, and we also have a new app out at csmusicteacher.com. That's a lesson planning app using the same template that you'll find in these books. Um, and check out the rest of our YouTube videos too. Thanks a lot.